from Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's number one Christian station, Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. I just thank God. I thank God for this opportunity to interview and talk with and, and just discuss current issues and, and where the body of Jesus Christ is. I just thank God for the ministries that are gathered here together. Abraham w- was not blessed because of his seeds. He was blessed because in the seed, that, that's the unity of the body. And I speak unity of the body. I speak unity of the body that we can come together as one man. I bless you in the name of Yeshua Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. What an exciting time. What an exciting time to be living. What an exciting time to be with my friend. Hallelujah. I just thank God. I, I just thank God. I thank God for the call in your life, my friend. I just I just really, really do. We're like we're like generations apart age wise. <laughs> Hallelujah, and I, I love I love your teaching. I love your 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 wisdom that that goes far beyond. I know that other, other people probably hear from you when they say he got to be uh, out of, out of space or something. He got to be. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Well, uh, yeah. Thank you, John, for uh, having me on the show. Yeah. And it's a pleasure uh, to always be in your presence. You know what the Lord has done in you is just absolutely phenomenal, and. Um, I praise God for it, and it's really, you know, the, the level and the deepness of, of your heart and the revelation that, that you carry, you know, you, you carry that, that revelation. You don't just speak revelation, you are the revelation <laughs> of God. You know, we become uh, the words, you know, how Jesus are. speaks his words, and he, you know, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, Yeah. and the God was the word. Mm-hmm. It's not you and your word out there, it's you are your word, Yeah. which is why he is healing, you know, yeah. he is gracious and, and merciful and, and kind. I could be reconciled back to yeah, God exactly. unless we were with God in the beginning. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Wake up. Wake up. Wake it. up, church. I love it. And, you know, I was, I was on my way this, here this morning, and I'm just thinking to myself, you know, what is it that, that the church really is craving? You know, and, and, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, it's, it's to hear the voice of the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's to really be led by the Spirit. You know, Scripture says that those who are led by the Spirit are called the sons of God. Yes. You know, and, and those who, you know, are in disobedience actually have the spirit of the Antichrist in them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's in, in Ephesians. And, and, you know, it's on my way. And, you know, you look at the Old Testament okay. and you look at Moses. Mm-hmm. What a character. that <laughs> He spoke yes. to God face to face. You know, and you look at uh, Exodus 3. 15 and and you know 14 and 15 and you know Moses says you know I'm, I'm going to go you know to Israel to the children of Israel and you know what name should I tell him you are you know he said and God says you know I am that I am okay okay well that's not you know necessarily a name but God says I am that I am and then you know you go to Exodus 33 you know seven, you know 15 through through 18 and you know you, you read and it's just so much in here where Moses is going through all these trials, you know, he's going mm-hmm. to Pharaoh, he's going to, you know, trying to set the people free, you know, mm-hmm. and get him into the promised land. And then finally he, you know, Lord gets Moses to, to the point to where he says, show me your glory, you know, show me your glory. And, and the Lord says, okay, I will do this. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will be proclaim the name of the Lord. Okay. And then you know he says that I am, you know, good. Uh, I'm slow to anger. I'm merciful. I'm faithful. I'm you know long suffering. You know, so the glory is his goodness. But what you catch there in you know in Exodus three fifteen it says, "What is your name? You know, what what name should I tell him?" Mm-hmm. And then here he finally says he doesn't ask what is your name. He says, "Show me." Who you are, and he says, "Now I will tell you my name, and my name is that I am good, I am slow to anger, I am merciful." You know, I I can't stress enough that you know, don't ask the Lord, "What is this? What is this?" Show me. Okay, but you, but in order to do that, yeah, my friend, you have to, you go through like 
Moses went yeah. through a preparation time. Absolutely. A preparation. It, the preparation takes 40 years, 80 years, whatever. Preparation, Absolutely. the manifestation is quick. It's like when you're cooking a meal or mm -hmm. baking a cake. The preparation is long, but then the cake is there, and boom. But, I mean, it, when he said, and he said, hide me in, in the cleft of the yeah. rock. I love that. Because <laughs> I, I love music. Yeah. And the cleft. That's I, <laughs> I want to, but anyway, we're, we're hidden in that yeah. in that musical realm. Yeah. I just, you know, and I know that much about it. But yeah. it's just exciting to just, just to delve into what absolutely. God and that, like like God has you praying for Him. Hello. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's funny that yeah. you say that this morning. You know, I'm waking up. It's you know, it's from three to seven, and I don't know why the Lord just always wakes me up. And there's a significance to that, I believe. But you know, I'm waking up this morning, and you know. I say, okay, Lord, I'm up. What do you want me to do? I want you to pray. Okay, well, well pray for, for who? For what? Okay. He says, pray for me. But Lord, you're, you're, you're the Lord God. You are, you're, you're holy. You know everything. You're mm -hmm. sovereign. Why would I pray for you? You know? Just, just pray. I said, okay, fine. Well, Lord, I pray that you understand my heart towards you and, and how open I am towards you. Mm -hmm. I pray that you understand that I... I want nothing in this world but you. Mm -hmm. I pray that you understand that my love towards you will never stop. Okay. And then I'm thinking to myself, man, why am I saying this to the Lord? And all of a sudden I hear a voice of the Lord say, that prayer you just prayed to me is my prayer to you. That you would understand all these things. And you know, I'm just blown away by the goodness of God. You know, when I first came to the Lord, you know, uh, with 40 days, I was having miraculous encounters, visitations, you know, open visions and mm -hmm. just heavenly things. And, you know, after that 40 days stopped of hearing the voice of the Lord, just, just being in 100% communion with Him, you know, being totally dead to self and alive yeah. in Christ. Right. And when that left, you know, I was, I, I looked at myself, I said, why can't I get back to that place? Why can't I get back to that place of encounters? And I feel, you know, that the body of Christ just needs an encounter with God. It needs it needs to get into that prayer closet, you know? I mean if if you think you can walk with God and not have a prayer life, you must be joking. You know? I mean it's it's a walk with God. You know? The the importance of you you raised the question, you know, why why do you get up between four and seven? Whatever. Yeah. That's the fourth watch. Okay. All right. That that's the only time Jesus walked on a water. During the fourth watch is the only time when the chariot wheels were removed off the Egyptian chariots wow. when they were chasing the Israelites, yeah. okay? Absolutely. So virtually all, I'll say it very openly, virtually all Christians that are really Christians and walking a little bit anyway with God, mm -hmm. all right, get up between the hours of three and six. Wow. And, and they, they think that they're refrigerators or prayer closet or something because they think I'm up because I'm hungry. You know what I mean? But yeah. God God desires a relationship. Absolutely. So he spent time with you because they cared. He spent time with you developing that relationship. But once you came to a point, and I don't know how else to put this, once you came to a point that you could see him face to face as in a mirror, yeah. then he could take the mirror away. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. So, so then you walk as him. Yeah. It, 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 it's in Now it's in you I move. Now it's in you I have my Absolutely. being. You go, you you go outside of the Saul realm and into the Paul realm. Absolutely. You, you you go beyond that 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 natural realm. But in order to do that, you got to spend time. Absolutely. But who wants to spend time with God? You know <laughs> I what mean, I mean? It's it's funny you say that because the only the only times you really want to spend time with God mm -hmm. is when your friend doesn't call you. You know when when there's an event not going on. When when all these things around you aren't happening they say now I can go and, and spend time with God but mm -hmm. you know some 5, 10, 15 minutes you know uh, if you're not spending time with God I encourage you even 10 minutes a day mm -hmm. stop, shut down everything turn off your phone mm -hmm. what you turn off the phone you, you gotta, gotta be turn, joking oh absolutely I'll, I'll, be, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll miss a friend request from some <laughs> some country that I, you know, that's wrong with a friend request from some company but yeah country but I mean it's it's that is so exciting to people. Yeah. It's absolutely so exciting. They have yeah. 900 friends, but the yeah. friend that lives inside of absolutely. them, it, that, that's what's important. Absolutely. That and relationship. Absolutely. And you build that relationship, you know, and by speaking in that unknown language, that unknown tongue, you know, you know, Paul, you know, you build you up in the most holy faith mm -hmm. and edifies your spirit and mm -hmm. your body. And, you know, it, it's, it's a, you know, your soul, mm -hmm. you don't know what to pray to God. 
Mm -hmm. But your spirit does because it's his spirit. Yeah. You know? So it not only does it edify you, but when you read scripture, pray in the spirit. You know, when when you're walking down the street, just just walking down to take out the garbage, start praying in the spirit. You make a conscious decision to always exactly. pray in the spirit. Paul says, I you know I think that I pray unceasingly. You know, mm -hmm. he prays unceasingly, and, yes. and he's always praying to God. Mm -hmm. He's always in that communion. He's always in that that secret place. He walked in the secret place. Those who abide in the secret place, you know, Most it's a place you get to a secret. When you abide in that secret place. Mm -hmm. You're invisible yeah. to the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm reminded of two things. Uh, number one, a, a quote I'll, I'll take from a possible friend of mine, Paul Bershe. And he says, we always look at the Holy Spirit in a form like a dove. Yeah. But a dove, and it flutters. A dove, before it lands, okay, will flutter to clean the landing field. But if it can't clean the landing field, it ain't going to land there. <laughs> 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 so many people yeah. wonder why. They're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Maybe the Holy Spirit doesn't want to live inside you. Absolutely. Maybe the Holy Spirit doesn't want to hang around with a bunch of anger, resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness. Absolutely. Maybe the Holy Spirit has a, a better place to Absolutely. live. Absolutely. You know, I was reading in, in Daniel, you know, and you look at Daniel 10, and in the chapter, you go through all these dream interpretations, mm -hmm. and you go through Daniel would praise God, yeah. and he would get into that secret place with God, Pray to his father who only saw in secret. Mm -hmm. And then when he went before the kings, he was rewarded in the open. Yeah. And that's the scripture. Yep. You know, you go in secret to your father who only sees in secret. Mm -hmm. And then he'll reward you openly. Yeah. Because he wasn't looking for himself glory. He was yeah. crying out to God, you know. I'm, and there's times you, you people want, you know, the, the rent paid. Mm -hmm. They want their car notes. Mm -hmm. But there's something going on bigger than these rents and these car notes, you know. The, you, you, everybody wants to get to heaven, but nobody's willing to die. Yeah. You know, and crucify yourself daily. You know, you, to walk in the high calling and the high level with God, you got to get out of the way. You got to get dead to this world. You got to just completely be in awe yeah. of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a person. It's not an it. It's not a thing. It's not a force. It's a person that is a free gift mm -hmm. when you accept it, and it lives mm -hmm. inside of you. And you know, there's there's a lot of Christians and, and you know, Catholics and, and you know, uh, Methodists, it doesn't matter. And quite frankly, we can't, we can't, you know, accept this person because he's a Methodist or he's, he's a Baptist, you know. The Lord's not worried about that. Did you no. bow a knee to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and you see your personal Savior and are you walking in relationship with him? Amen. You know, if the Lord can get, can get that far, then I can get that far too. You, know? you can have a relationship my brother, as you know, the relationship has to be based upon the only thing we can give him was his time. Amen. Nothing else. There is Amen. nothing else Amen. that you can give God but time. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. That, that, that's your, your greatest treasure. And if you want to spend time, like we spend time with each other, yeah. we develop a relationship. Yeah. If we don't Absolutely. see each other, what's a relationship? Absolutely. Yeah, I know his name, you know, but that, that's <laughs> right. And, right. And that's the difference between... and. and but Lord, we we healed in your name. But Lord, we you use my name because you're yeah. my you're, you're my wife. Absolutely. But you're not in intimate relationship with me as my bride, right. and that's what he wants. He wants that intimacy with with his bride, the church, the church to spend time with him, and 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 not time to praise, hallelujah, praise God because you're in church and four hundred people are looking at you. Absolutely, it's it's in in. Go ahead. No, I, I was just. Bouncing off what you said, you know, it's people are are so ashamed. Still, even their Christian walk, they're, they're so ashamed of of their past, you know. And and you can't move on if you're still ashamed of your past because it still has a chain on you. But you know, in Romans six, you know, it's, it's three through you know uh, eleven, and, and mm -hmm. it just talks about how you know if you know knowing that. We, uh, we were baptized into Jesus Christ. We were also baptized into his death. And it talks about that we were, you know, crucified with him. Right. You know, Jesus d didn't just die for you, but he died as you. Mm -hmm. You know, he, everything that was wrong with you, he put on the cross 2,000 years ago. He put it on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Matthew 5, 17 and 18, I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets, but to fulfill it. 
Mm-hmm. So the law was fulfilled through Jesus, and Jesus is in you, and you are in him. So when the Father looks at you, he sees nothing wrong with you because the law has been fulfilled in Jesus, and everything that was wrong with you, he nailed it to the cross 2,000 years ago. You You're mentioned completely the, dead to sin. You are dead to it. it. When something is dead, you don't you don't go bringing it back to, to you know alive. That, that's <laughs> that's Satan's attack. It is to try to remind people of who they were. Yeah, and and he, he says it so many times that they think that they haven't been released from that, so they still carry that burden. Absolutely, they went through two or three or five abortions. Absolutely. They they killed five people. That it, 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 it stuff that they they stole some money. I mean, yeah. whatever. And the enemy will try to remind them of the past. I'm reminded again, over and over again, of, of, you mentioned Romans 6. And, and then in Romans 7, Paul said, oh, this, this conflict that I had, my spirit man wants to go one way, my flesh man wants to go another. But beginning in the 8th chapter, he said, but now, therefore, there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Absolutely. That's when the spirit man is over the flesh man. Right. So this mm. was never inside my mother's body. Come on. Because I'm a brand new creation. Absolutely. In Christ. Absolutely. All yeah. things that passed away. All the all. old has passed away. All. all of it. What's the Greek word for all? All. 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 <laughs> all. <laughs> all of them. Everything has passed away. You're 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 completely dead to that old sin nature. You are now alive. Yeah. To God. And you know, what what then? Shall shall we keep sinning now grace abounds? Certainly not. God no. forbid. No. How how can you keep sinning when you are dead to it? Mm-hmm. You know, how why would you want to do that? And and people say, Well, you know, I I I can't get over this, you know, I can't get over this addiction. Well, you know, you don't you don't have to get over it. What you all all you gotta do is just let it go. Mm-hmm. Just give it to him. You know, he died for it, he paid a price for it. You know, yeah. so when you're still holding on to something that's his. Right. Jesus comes and says, "Hey, that's mine." And he's he's <laughs> you know, not going to go me. through another crucifixion. You know, it's now our turn to be crucified. You know, exactly. You know, it's, you know, the Holy Spirit is is the Lord in the church, mm-hmm. and Jesus is Lord over the church, mm-hmm. and the Father is is Lord of the church. Mm-hmm. But so many people are saying, "Lord, you do this, you do that, you go here, you do that," and that's, that's when. You know, that's out of the, the soul realm is when they say, Lord, you do this, you do that. But the thing is, we're, we're in the spirit and spirit and truth. You, Lord, thank you that you gave us the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit that now we can go do this. He says, mm-hmm. you know, it's better that I go so that he can come. You know, he can, he can teach you. He's your helper. We can cast out the demons. We can heal the sick. We can raise the dead. We can prophesy. You know, he's given all power and authority unto us. And it's just we're waiting for the Lord to do something when he's done it all. Yeah, complete. It's done. It's, it's finished. finished. <laughs> yeah. When I was in in Ohio, and um, I I visited a place where my I came to the Lord. It's through a little track, through a little track. <laughs> I went to you know prayer at a home fellowship. Yeah. And um, anyway, when I went to that house, they had some guests there, and one of the ladies that was there was talking about her place in church, because when she goes to church, she sits in a certain place, and if anybody else is sitting there. You know, she really feels like they have to move because that's my seat. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm going to interrupt, but I I yeah. want to be nice because I'm at somebody else's right, house. <laughs> you, you're not really going to church. You, you have a, a a bondage, a bondage to that chair. You have yeah. a bondage to that seat. Yeah. If you if on. you're going to church and you have to sit in that particular place, then it becomes a, a tradition. It becomes a habit. You're not going there to exalt and magnify Him. I mean, it's it, it's beyond my wildest imagination that people would would even think that or act that way. But that that's just where the church is. They're yeah. not going Absolutely. for a relationship. This is my place. Well, if if it's that your place, then you're like you talk. You're in the soulish realm. Yeah. You 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 didn't, you didn't get out. You're not I mean, in the spirit realm. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that we are saved, we're being saved, and we will be saved. Okay. Your spirit is saved. Yes. And then it says you're being saved. Your soul is being saved. Mm-hmm. And then your body will be saved. Mm-hmm. We're in that that middle realm of our soul is being saved. Psalms 23, you know, I, I lay beside the still waters and he restores my soul. Yes. That's the process that we're going through. He's restoring your soul. What once was once lost, he is restoring. He's bringing it back to fullness and the holiness. You know, and the, and the only way you can restore your soul and renew your mind is by doing the will of God. Mm-hmm. That's how you kill your soul is by obeying God. Yeah. He doesn't want to sacrifice. He requires mercy. You know, he, he by obeying him, you kill that soul. Oh, give this person ten dollars. Ten dollars, Lord. I only have you know fifteen. Give him ten dollars. Okay, I'm going to give him $10. Now, what he's doing is now you have no attachment to money anymore. 
because mm-hmm. he is your provider. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, you gotta crucify yourself. And, and anytime you do that, anytime someone does that, yeah. you know, they they have to be reminded of you know, repeat. People talk, you know, the wealth transfer, the wealth transfer, that all the money of the wicked is going to come into the righteous. You know, they think of their, that they're righteous. <laughs> but anyway, i got to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> when, when the wealth transfer is when you take it out of your kingdom, yeah. like that person did, the yeah. $10, and put it in God's kingdom. Right. When, when, when the woman who was dying, her and her son, and then she had a little bit of flour, a little bit of oil she was going to make a cake for her and her son and then the prophet says make me a cake first yeah. she was taking it out of her kingdom right. and put it in god's kingdom and then the, it was multiplied the, what she had there was multiplied the oil never never stopped never never stopped and it carried her carried it through the famine of, of that land at that time or the same way i'm thinking of, of the ship the ship that that simon was trying to catch some fish, and he caught no fish. He took the ship out of his kingdom. He gave it to Jesus to preach from. He took it out of his kingdom, gave it to God's kingdom. When he got the ship back, he couldn't carry all the fish that Absolutely. he caught. you got to get it out of your kingdom. This Absolutely. is giving. What are you giving? What are you giving? If you the irony, if you gave me $10 or $20 or $500, it's still you. There's yeah. only one of us here. I'm, yeah. I'm talking to myself. How many <laughs> brides do we think that God has? There's only one bride of Christ. <laughs> he, he, he says that in Scripture. Yeah. He said, you feed them, you fed me. You visit them in the hospital, you're visiting me. Absolutely. It's a different mindset. Absolutely. You know, I I go back to that to that moment, and I'll tell you an experience, an encounter I had with the Lord. And, and uh, you know, I tried so hard to get those encounters, you know, those heavenly mm-hmm. encounters, those, those uh, experiences, those visitations from the Lord. And I would perform my hardest, I would pray, I would read scripture, I would do whatever I can and worship until I was face, you know, blue in the face. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you cannot perform your way into an encounter with God. Yep. You, you just won't be able to. You can read scripture for 40 years, you won't, you know, yep. it's, it's, it's all government by God. It's all mm-hmm. on, on His timing, those encounters. And the thing is, you know, I was trying so hard to, to kill my, my sin nature. Mm-hmm. And then I went to church one day. I was worshiping, and I said, Lord, I don't understand. I'm giving it all to you. I don't understand it anymore. I don't mm-hmm. get you anymore. I had no idea who you are anymore. Mm-hmm. I look down. There's blood on the floor. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm looking at the, these blood steps. It goes all the way down. I look up, and there's Jesus on the cross. Mm-hmm. And he said, son, every step I took to my cross, I bled. Mm-hmm. What makes you think you won't? Oh, beautiful. And, you know, I, I sat there weeping weeping because I was thinking that I wouldn't have to go through a cruci- crucifixion. I wouldn't have to go through any persecution and on all these things. But, you know, it hurts. It hurts to walk with God, but that's that's the great part of it because he mends your heart. Yeah, I, the only way. And, and, and if, you know, people I all want to prophesy, they, they want to, you know, cast out demons and, yes, do all those things. But if you want to move heavily in the prophetic, mm-hmm. you got to learn to get healed along the way. Mm-hmm. You, you have to. You know, and, and I think, I believe 100% the process is just as important as the outcome. You go through all this process, and then once you finally get that breakthrough or that encounter, you're glorifying God for the process. The Lord did all of this for me. Mm-hmm. You know, being in the desert is, is one of the the best times. It's so much fun, but people like, oh, you know, I'm in the desert. I'm not hearing God. I'm not doing this. But that's when you're you're pulling on Him because you're hunger and you thirst for that righteousness and you will be filled yeah. only through Jesus. Is- many, many, many times it's difficult to understand that the struggles that we go through, yeah. the hardships that we go through, yeah. you just get the flesh out of the way. Absolutely. Just to get the flesh. Cause yeah. you, cause <laughs> <laughs> I'm reminded back in Genesis, right? Right back in yeah. Genesis, right? Right when the, when the glory of God was covered with dust, yeah. And God says, "Say and eat the dust." Wow. Okay, because yeah. He wanted the dust removed, which is the flesh. Absolutely. That His glory can show. Hmm. I'm reminded of Gideon's army. You, you, you know the story. They had these jars of, made of clay, which is us, made of clay. But inside was the light. But you had a crack. You had to crack the shell. The, the, the flesh got to get out of the way Absolutely. that the light can come forth. Absolutely. That, that people could understand that Jesus went, yeah, Jesus went, his body physically was buried in the tomb. 
But Jesus did not come out of the grave. It was Christ. Christ, right. Another Absolutely. realm, another realm. But, and people have to learn to separate. And I, I urge you, study Jesus Christ and study Christ Jesus. Absolutely. You know, the content of your Christian walk, of just walking with the Lord, the content of your life is intimacy. Mm -hmm. And you can see where people are rooted. Wherever they, people find their security is where they get their wisdom, mm -hmm. is where they get their power, mm -hmm. is, is where they, they value. And, and values govern your behavior. Mm -hmm. So what are you valuing? How, look, you look at your behavior. He's not trying to fix the old you no. and fix your behavior. He crucified you. Now the Holy Spirit's here teaching you how to walk in the new you. Yeah. When, you know? when, when I was diagnosed with certain heart issues and the Lord had me to study the different types of hearts and it came up with 39 wow. wrong types of hearts. Wrong types of hearts. Wrong wow. types of hearts. And so when I washed them away under a shower... Physically, under a shower, wash away pride, ego, wash away, wash away judgment, wash away all the bitterness, wash away. And then I went back for my exam. Mm -hmm. the cardiologist could not find any more blockages because I take, you've got to take God. out your blockages. Praise God. What, whatever's holding you back from God, you've got to take them out. Praise God. You gotta, you, it's you. You remove them in the spiritual wow. and in the natural, they're gone. We bless you. We bless you. Thank you, Pastor Al. Thank hey, you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Always a pleasure. Appreciate you. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> always a pleasure. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs>